my name is Dalton Hawkersmith, and I'm here to show you about Reality Store. The first station we have is Salary and Taxes. Here you will spin to see how many children you have and if you are single or married. And it told me that I am single with two children, which means that I get money from the government, which is called child support. And uh, if you're married, you get uh, the dual income from your spouse. They also have to where they will fill out how much money you will earn from your job. And if you end up running out of money, you can come back for a part-time job, which you will roll the dice and it will tell you what part-time job you have. Next, we have the bank. Here at the bank, they will show you uh, your checking and savings account set up and uh, how much you put into savings. And they'll help you and they'll talk about what's left and um, what you need to do with your money. Next, we have the student loans. Student loans is where, depending on what career you have, you can get a, the degree so when I did it I was a physician so I had the uh, doctorate degree and I had a high enough GPA to where I got a scholarship and paid $900 per month and the prices vary on your GPA next we have the housing at the housing you can pick a variety of homes or apartments uh, varying from A, B, and C which are larger and get higher in price we have utilities at the utilities depending on your house you can pick um, your gas water and electric bill and you can also pick your cell phone package or the cell phone only and those vary in prices depending on which house you have then you can venture around and enjoy the reality store hope you have a great time Hi, I'm Emma Baker and we're here with Mrs. Begley and she's helping out at the salary and taxes booth. So what exactly do you do at this station? Okay, at this station we have the kids spin the dial to see if they are married or single and how many kids they have. And then we, based on their GPA and their job, we look at how much money they're going to make for the year, for the month, and without taxes, after taxes are taken out, how much they make per month. Okay, and since you helped to run this before Ms. Hawkersmith took over, how has it changed since you were mostly in charge to how she's mostly in charge? You know what? I, it just gets better and better. It's, uh, the kids seem to be really, really prepared. I am so impressed with how polite all of you guys have been, how you look at us and you smile and you talk and you seem to be so polite. And I, I, I'm just really impressed with that. Hi, I'm with Mickey Luttrell, and she's helping at the student loan station. So what exactly do you do at this station? Um, when students come to us, they tell us what their job is, and then when they get here, we tell them how much it's going to cost to get their degree, and then how much it'll be every month for a payment. So then they take that out of their checkbook. Nice. And what is your purpose in helping with the reality store? Like, what do you want to get out of it or give kids? Um, I think it's important for kids to know that as you get older, you're going to have bills to pay and you have a lot of responsibilities, and this is a good way to get started and to realize that it is reality. Hi, we're here with Cody, and he's helping with the uh, utilities station. So what exactly do you do? At the utility yeah. station? So we help people get uh, water, warm water, electricity, gas, all the things that a lot of times we take advantage of or don't even really think about. Uh, we help people pay for those things so that uh, uh, they will have those things. Hi, we're here with Sam Weber and he's helping with the groceries station. So what exactly do you do at the station? We are selling groceries for family members of all sizes. People who live alone and people who live with kids and um, who live with their family. Nice. And what do you hope to get out of it or help other people with by volunteering? I just I hope that kids will be able to realize how much food really costs because a lot of times like you don't realize how much it costs to pay for uh, your kids and just pay for you even yourself even you don't even realize how much um, it can be just to buy some of the basic stuff. Hi, we're here with, with Drew Sylvester, and we're at the bank station. So, what exactly do you do at the station? So we are helping uh, the children um, 
kind of start a plan to save money. So n not all of their money is going to be in that checking account. But we want to make sure they're, they're being smart about it as well, that they have enough uh, in their accounts for their expenses because we're kind of the second stop on, on their path today. They haven't got to their housing expense or their childcare and things like that. So we want to make sure that they keep that in mind as they decide how much they want to start saving and things like that. And, and also throughout uh, their time here, they maybe they're running low on funds and they need to transfer money from that savings account that they started. So we help them with that as well. Kind of help them budget and, and plan a little bit. Okay, and then what do you hope to give to the kids by volunteering? Yeah, so uh, really just, just hope they get a kind of an understanding of maybe what life can be like as, as an adult whenever they graduate from middle school, then high school, then on to college or, or whatever. What um, what things cost out in the real world? You know, I got all these things to, to worry about: childcare, transportation, housing, groceries, things that they probably don't think about right now. Um, I think it may open their eyes a little bit. Hi, um, we're here with Peter Weiser in the financial counseling station. And what exactly do you do in the station? Well, when the kids uh, actually run out of money or are having problems financially, they come to us. And we find a way to put more money in their checking account by uh, getting a different house, different car. Uh, some of the, the things that they can get later, we can have them trade in and get something less. So we basically help them uh, balance their checkbook and find more money to be able to spend So to, for their support. Nice. And what are you hoping to either get out of this for yourself or give to the kids by volunteering? Uh, for me, not so much. I've been doing this for quite a while. I think uh, I'd like the kids to understand that a lot of times their GPA uh, does really affect the type of job that they get and the type of income that, that they can make. It's not always 100% true, but I hope that they realize that uh, if you work hard now, then you can play a little later, but if you play now, then it's gonna be a little tougher later on. So that's the kind of lesson we wanna uh, instill in them. Hi, I'm Emma Baker, and we're here with Patricia Hickman, and this is before she's going to a reality store. So what are your expectations? What do you think it's going to be like? I'm hoping it will go smoothly. Like, I hope I'll actually get a real experience, and I hope I don't go in debt. How confident do you think you are that you're going to make it out with money, or at least on the positive side of things? Not very likely. <laughs> and we're here with royalty. Um, so what are your expectations going into the reality store? I feel like um, it's going to be a pretty good flow, and I'm just going to you know, go through it like everybody else go through it, try to make it through. And how confident are you that you can stay afloat and manage your money wisely? I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty wise with my money, so I feel like I'm going to do pretty good. Hey, we're here with Autumn Scott, and she's just about to go into the reality store. So what are your expectations for like, what you're going to do? Um... I feel like it might be somewhat educational, but mostly fun. Just like getting to see how many volunteers got here and things like that. Yeah, and uh, how do you think you're gonna do? Is it gonna be easy, kind of hard, in your opinion, to stay afloat monetarily? Um, for me, I think it might be easy, but it really depends for other people what jobs they picked and what they got. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm here with Jackson Sims. Um, are you excited? reality store oh yeah I get to get out of class so yeah that is pretty exciting um what do you expect to happen when you're in there going through all the tables and all that I expect it to be kind of challenging but not too challenging you know so yeah all right um do you expect yourself to come out with lots of money or be on the negative side I expect myself I expect myself to come out with like a little bit of money but not a lot because like I want to live like comfortable but not like Spend like a lot of my money, have some left over, you know? Hey, we're here with Tatum Sires, and she's just about to go into the reality store. So, what are your expectations for what's gonna go on? I don't really know. I don't have very much expectations. I just, I expect to have fun. Let's go. Yeah. Um, do you expect to be able to keep your monetary uh, values afloat? Like, are you gonna stay in the positive? Or are you gonna need to go get a second job? I'm expecting I'll do pretty good and I'll stay afloat. Okay. 
Well, let's see how that turns out. Hi, I'm Chris Rometta. I'm here with Brendan Ferguson. So what did you think of your experience in the reality store? Well, it was a good learning experience. I came out with some positive cash. Um, I felt like a lot of people got to experience what it was like to live a real life with a job and family. <laughs> Do you think that this is useful for real life situations when you actually have a job when you're an adult? Uh, yeah. It, uh, it, it's totally a good prepare for uh, future situations. There were a lot of uh, like what if situations, like speeding tickets or uh, sicknesses and stuff like that. So it was good, good prepare. And, uh, All right, I'm Chris Rometta. I'm here with Gabe Falco. Um, how was your experience with Reality Store? Uh, it was it was exhausting. You know, um, my wife left me, left me with three kids. I had to uh, downsize a whole lot. Um, as a politician, I was living in an apartment and riding the bus. It was, it was exhausting. I'm, I'm really sorry, man. I'm really sorry. Did you end up positive? Yeah, I ended up with uh, uh, 40 bucks, 50 cents. I mean, that's not that bad. Um, do you think that this will help you uh, with real life scenarios when you actually have a job when you're an adult? Oh uh, yeah, I do think it will. It's uh, it taught me a valuable lesson. Um, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna have a lot of kids, you get a spouse. You know, you want to, you want that shared income. You don't want to do it all on your own. Uh, it's hard to do that. All right, here's Chris back with another interview. We're here with Patricia after her experience in the reality store. How did it go for you? It it went well until I had to go get a second job. Uh, I still have money left, so that's always good. Didn't, need, didn't even need to tap into my savings. Well, um, do you think that what you went through in the reality store can help you when you actually get a job when you're an adult? Yes, because this can actually teach me how to make it through life with a handicapped child if I get one. All right, and most importantly, did you have fun? Yes, I did, although it was very nerve wracking. Hi, I'm back with Royalty. So how was your experience in the reality store? It was um, good, stressful, more stressful than I had thought it would be, but it was good. So how'd you do staying afloat? I did okay. I fell a little bit down, but then I got myself back up after, you know, doing some investments and um, figuring out what I can lower and things like that, and then went back up. All right, I'm here with Ellie Irwin. How was your, how was your overall experience with reality store? Um, my overall experience was really good. It was really fun and I enjoyed it. All right. Um, did you end up with positive or negative money? I ended up with positive money. That's that's really good. Um, how do you think that Reality Store will help you when you actually get a job when you're an adult? It will help me because I'll be more wise than I was like if I didn't do it. And I will be good at managing all of my money. All right. Did, did you enjoy it? Yes. <laughs> Hi, we're back with Autumn, and she just got done with the reality store. So, what was your experience like? Was it as you expected or not? Um, pretty much. I ended up with less money than I thought I'd w I would. Did you successfully stay afloat monetarily? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't think I went in debt at all. Did you have to pick up a second job, get loans, stuff like that? Nope. All right, I'm back with Jackson here, who has just finished the reality store. Tell me, how did you feel about it? I had a great time, it was very fun, and I saved a lot of money, so yeah. How much money did you save? $766. Wow, that's actually a lot of money. What did, um, what was your situation, what did you have as your career? I was a pharmacist and I was single with no kids or anything, so I was, I was living pretty good, so yeah. All right, maybe had your dog to take care of on a ranch somewhere in the country. You know, we, we all have that fantasy once in a while. Hey, we're here with Trace Wharton and Lucas Young. And uh, how was your experience? Uh, <laughs> all right, so uh, in the reality store, it was pretty fun. Like it actually showed me like what my job and how life would actually be. And it was surprising about how a lot of this stuff costed. Pretty much the same what he said. Yeah, it's like, it's just a lot of fun. 
honestly. And you get to, like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, were you guys married, single, kids, no kids? How many? Uh, I was married. I had uh, three kids. Um, one was handicapped. I had a wife and one kid that was handicapped. Okay, and how did that affect your costs and your experience? Uh, well, uh, I had <laughs> nine hundred dollars. <laughs> you had to spend nine hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I had to spend nine hundred dollars on <laughs> my children. Probably had to spend three hundred dollars. Hi, we're back with Tatum, and we're joined by Nakai and Sanaya. Right? Okay. And they just finished the reality store experience. So, how was it? Um. I liked it, but I went broke, so it was okay. I learned a lesson. I did not like it. Um, <laughs> it was not fun. I mean, it was fun, but like, yeah, no. What didn't you like about it? I had three kids and a husband who did not help. <laughs> I was just playing. It was fun, but like, I had to go to financial care. But I had money left. How was your experience? It was really good. The people were nice, and I had money left over. The people were really nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, how easy was it to stay afloat? That was that was the really hard part. I did not like that. It was very hard. Not very easy. Nope. My name is Dalton Hawkersmith, and I am in the. I'm here with the interview with Mr. Williams and Mrs. Hawkersmith. How do you think it went, Mr. Williams? Oh, it went fabulous. That's being my first time doing this. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the setup, the how everything went, the kids, everybody dressing up. Um, heard some really good things in there from the kids, and just how excited everybody was. Uh, I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I wish I would have went through this as a kid because it would have showed me some things that I could have probably done better budgeting. So. All in all, great day. I'm so glad we do this, and I got to be a part of it. Same question to you. It was wonderful. I loved like the kids' responses. My favorite part is kids cheering, going, "Ah, I don't have any kids," or "Yay, I'm single." You know. <laughs> so I love just seeing the kids' reactions, and so it went really well today. The kids were really receptive. Several kids were like, "Can I do it again?" So I think it went really well. Do you think this is beneficial for uh, the kids? Oh yes, definitely. I mean, everybody needs to know how to budget, how to forecast for the future. Um, you're going to be put in these real life situations as you get older where you're going to have to make a choice of, do I afford this car or can I afford this car? Can I live in this house or can I live in that house? And hopefully you guys going through this saw that, hey, if I make these certain choices, I can make it through a month. And also we wanted to show too is that just how education unlocks your future. You know, the better GPA you had, the better job you had, the more you could afford, the better choices you can make. So getting those nice careers and going through college uh, will really will help you. And that's hopefully what you guys got out of that today. Uh, what can you say to kids who come in, in the future? Um, just make sure that you're actually trying and studying because your education will take you a lot further than, you know, just playing around and stuff. So I think that's what we try to prove here is just to make sure that, you know, you are putting your education first. So thank you guys.